It's called How to Use LinkedIn to Fill Your Calendar Without Expensive Ads. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about you and a little about your business and then tell us how to use LinkedIn. I'm a Brit living in Spain in the sunshine and loving it. I've had my own business for 30 odd years and I went online about 15 years ago and started specializing in LinkedIn about five years ago. And uh, really, cause I, sorry, Facebook got fed up with Facebook <laughs> and I thought I'd really crack LinkedIn. So I took about three or four courses and took the best out of those and put them together with my own expertise and came up with a process that works. It worked for me. I never intended to sort of offer it as a service, but it worked for me. And I thought, well, if it works for me, it worked for everybody else. So why not share it? I'll give you the bottom line first. And the bottom line is a bit of a mantra of mine, which is take massive action. So there's no point in if you're certainly if it's a new platform to you is just sort of posting every month or connecting with a few people. You need to keep at it. You need to get to know LinkedIn. You need to really be consistent and it is worth it as long as you put in the legwork up front. And LinkedIn provides me with all the clients I need and want. I'm proof of the pudding and it works for other people. So why wouldn't it work for you? And it makes just life really simple that you don't have to do loads and loads of other things to generate leads and business. So as I say, there's, there's seven steps. The first step is to get really clear on a market, on a niche, and it really pays to specialize, especially on LinkedIn, and especially when you're starting to get going. If you can just think about one particular market and deeply understand their problems and understand what their dreams are and where they are in their life, then you understand how they express those things and the words and the language that they use. If you can get inside their heads, often by doing research, when they read what you're producing, whether it's your website or a sales funnel or content or whatever it is, any outward communication, they think that you actually can read their minds and that's really the position that you want to get to. So if you're serving a large audience, the tighter you can bring it in, the better your results are gonna be. So that's number one. Step two then is all about creating what I call a magnetizing marketing message. This is the message that your perfect clients are really gonna resonate with, which obviously you craft based on the work that you've done in step one. And if they really resonate with the message, it'll compel them to take the next action. And the point is to really combine everything that you've done in step one into a short and simple statement that just quickly and clearly communicates the position that you own and you know, where they are. Go from too few leads and clients to having a consistent stream of clients using a proven, effective, simple lead generation process without spending money on paid ads complicated tech or having a big list. With all this amazing information that you've got, then the next step is to really look at your LinkedIn profile. And if you've completed enough, LinkedIn will give you what they call an all-star rating. And if you scroll through your profile on the right-hand side, the key things is complete all the sections, concentrate on the banner, tagline under your name and the about section. So especially the banner and the tagline because they're really key pieces of real estate that will just draw you into the next bit which is your name and the tagline so something like the little message the marketing message that i read out that could go under your name they love the sound of that so then they read on to the about section and find out more about you and they might scroll down to see what you've done before and what your qualifications are and how many recommendations you've got those three things, banner, tagline, and about section, you could craft those quite easily if you've done steps one and two. Step number four is finding your target audience. So where are you gonna find all these people that you wanna connect with? So there's, I think I've got about four ways, or at least. You know, promote your LinkedIn profile on your blog, after every blog post, on your website, on your email signature. I mean, there's loads of different places where you can promote it and LinkedIn actually do give you a little button thing that you can download from LinkedIn that you could use. There's also a people you may know feature. So if you click on my network at the top in the menu of a top of your profile, then when the page opens, just scroll down and you'll see people you may know. And then also there's a who viewed your profile feature, which is not very extensive if you don't have one of the premium accounts. If you pay for 
LinkedIn in any shape or form, you will get everybody that's viewed your profile. If you don't, you'll just get, I think it's six. But you just go to view profile and then look for your dashboard and the left-hand side of your profile, it'll say who viewed your profile. So, you know, obviously people that are viewing your profile are interested in some way so you can easily spot your potential clients that are looking for you. And one of my favorite ways is to join groups where your audience hangs out. So just like Facebook for ambitious entrepreneurs or people with rheumatoid arthritis or business owners based in New York or whatever it is, I've got a client, she helps introverted leaders. Well, people don't put on their profile that, that they're introverted. They just don't. So where do you find them? You probably find them in a group. And the beauty of the groups is, is that you've got a large number of your audience in one place. Another client, she coaches high level women executives who are faith based and want to bring more faith based into their business. So it gives you a bigger pond in which to fish. And that's especially useful if you've only got a few connections. So I belong to, I think, about 65 groups, and that gives me an extra 3 million people to connect with. They often share things, and you'll see that in your feed. They will often comment on people's posts, or other people's posts that you're not connected with, so you'll see that in your feed. You can scroll through the news feed and find people in there. So that's a nice way of doing it, because you can comment on their comment or comment on their post, and then go to their profile and say, hey, loved your post today or loved your comment. Let's connect if you're open and do it that way. I've on to step five. So once you've found them, then obviously you need to start reaching out. So obviously don't be spammy or salesy. And even I think when people are really passionate, it can come along as salesy. You know, think about them all the time, not about how passionate you are and how amazing your product is, but Again, put yourself in their shoes. So start to reach out, show an interest in them, look at their content, like or comment, share it, whatever, and then send them a connection request with a friendly message. When they accept, send them another message, show an interest in them, ask a question as a conversation starts, because your objective at this point is really to get a conversation going in the inbox. Step six is obviously you're adding to your connections and your new connections. So people often say to me, how often should I post content? I think if you're already starting out with LinkedIn, and I was going to say post five times a week, if you can post Monday to Friday, then that is a good thing. You know, you're starting to build up, LinkedIn is starting to get to know you, and so are your connections. So you can post in the news feed, which is going to get you large numbers of views and likes and comments. You can also post articles, which actually you can automatically create a post from that as well. So if you're posting on your blog, post it on your blog, then take that article, post it on LinkedIn publishing. And then from that article, just create a little news feed post and publish that. And the good thing about LinkedIn generally, and especially if you've got the right sort of articles, if you know what your keywords and key phrases are, which we haven't even touched on, that Google really likes LinkedIn. So it's going to be picked up. The last step is measure your stats. This is so key. So going back to the title of this, you know, you're on LinkedIn to get your meetings in the calendar, to get the number of clients and the turnover you want. We, you know, if you don't measure what you're doing, then you don't know you don't know how you're going to get to where you want to go. So what I suggest you do is keep a note of the number of new connections you make each month, the number of meetings you get booked, the number of offers you've made in terms of you can buy this or this and it'll cost you a million pounds or two million pounds, the number of sales you get, the average value of the sales. So you'll know by the time you get to the end of even month two of doing that. And so you just work back up the line and you think if you're getting 10 meetings uh, booked every month, you want to double your sales, pretty much you need 20 meetings or you might need to hone your sales skills. If you can see that you're getting one in two, one in three sales, then that's pretty good going. Your sales skills are probably okay. But again, your results are going to go, come back to that step one, step two, which is audience and message. If you're off message and you're going for the wrong people with the right message or the right people with the wrong message, your stats are just going to be poor. So this is why I'm saying it's, it's a process, it's a logical step, step by step. 
if you measure it, you'll know what you need to do more of. So it might be you need to make more connections. I mean, the other thing you could monitor is how many inbound inquiries you get and where they've come from. So if they come from your content, because as you build up your content, you'll get more people reading it, you'll get more, and more comments and you'll get inbound inquiries. So there's a number of things you can measure. Look at your stats and decide on what you're going to do the following month. Tracy, thank you so very much. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Tracy, for sharing your knowledge. Thanks again for giving me the opportunity to talk about my passion today. Thanks for sharing with us. That's a pleasure. All right, okay. talk soon. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.